You're listening to the Flickcast, a podcast about stuff nerds love. I am Chris Ulrich, and joining me, Joe Dilworth. Hey, Joe, what's up, buddy? Uh, you know, we're just here to talk about some geeky stuff. How how, how are you doing, though? That's I'm okay. I'm a question. little I'm a little I'm a little sick, but I'm gonna try to push through. Uh, so I apologize to people listening if I sound like total crap, but. Uh... The show must go on, as they say. And so I'm excited about this episode, too. Yeah, it's great. We also have uh, Digital Trends contributing editor and professional nerd uh, Rick Marshall joining us. Hey, Rick. Hello. Uh, I just have to correct you, though. It's professional geek. I'm ah. sorry. My apologies. Okay. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. Was, gotcha. So, all right. That brings up a good question. What do you think is the, dif- is the difference between <laughs> geek and nerd? Oh, gosh. You know what? I, I don't know. Since I, you brought it up, man. I, I just know. love it. I just went with the original uh, the original title I was given, and I'm just trying to stick all by right. it. It was, it was toward, sort of an aside when it happened originally, and I'm just rolling with it. I always thought geek was somebody like in a circus that nailed stuff into their heads. I remember that from that X-Files episode. Yeah, yeah, that and like yes. the whole, uh, uh, was it a, a Nightmare Alley uh, thing about yeah, the yeah. geek that also made yeah. me uh, cringe a little bit at the word. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I am I am geekily nerdy. How about that? That's good, yeah. Yeah. I like that. So it's a good it's a good episode, Joe. We're gonna have really good fun today. Uh, last week, as you recall, I'm sure we talked about uh, stuff we were looking forward to in 2023. So this week, we're gonna mix it up and look a little bit backwards now and talk about the things that we really enjoyed and loved from 2022 since the year's wrapping up. So it's gonna be a lot. So maybe we should just get started. What do you think? Yeah, let's dive right into it. Let's get it done. Rock out. All right, let's. Should we go? Uh, I don't know. I always try to think about which, which category first. I guess we should talk about movies first. So, sure. Rick, do you have? Sure. What are your, some of your favorite movies from twenty twenty two? Oh gosh, some of my favorite movies. Well, uh, recency bias might be in effect, but I, I did sure. absolutely love uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Um, that's been the most recent one that I absolutely adore. You know, uh, I, I agree with Rick over recency bias, but uh, from my perspective, it's because I didn't I didn't go out to the theater a lot this year. Um, and yeah. uh, well, you know, a lot pe- a lot of people did, and it was good to see people back in seats and movie theaters doing well, and movies doing well in the theaters. Uh, uh, I was going to say as well, and use well a bunch there. I don't know why, but well, that's nice. Uh, so there's been a lot of things that I have seen recently that came out earlier in the year that I've greatly enjoyed. Um, I, I'm going to say right now, though, definitively my all time favorite film of the entire year. Bar none was uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Just yeah. beautiful movie, fantastic film. Um, it was one of uh, every once in a while I go to see a movie and I'm like sitting there going, I can't believe I'm watching this in in a good way. And this was one of those times. So fantastic movie. Um, Absolutely, uh, I can't yeah. say enough about it. That was actually my uh, my choice on a lot of the uh, you know award nominations and things yeah. like that that yeah. had to go around this year. Uh, I was uh, this was my first year when I was in a Critics Choice Association and uh, being able to fill out awards and nominations for that one. And I as I was filling them out for all the different categories, I just found myself nominating everything everywhere all at once in yeah, like <laughs> every single category. I'm like, wow, this is. I really like this movie. Looking back on it yeah. now, I, I must have really, really liked this movie because it was one of the first films that came to mind in nearly every way, uh, whether it be acting, whether it be visual effects, whether it be direction, you know, all of these things. Uh, that one just kept popping up, uh, you know, throughout my, throughout my, you know, filling out of all these categories. I, You know, a lot of people like to throw out their... Um, Especially about movies they really like. Well, it's not a perfect film, and uh, I think that's a crazy thing to say because I honestly don't think there's anything... There's no such thing as a perfect film. There's too much input from so many people that it's difficult to make a perfect movie. And what does that really mean anyway, right? But if I were to say, is there a perfect movie out there, I would pick that one because it's just... There, I can't... You know, I, I always do a pass on a movie, especially something that I just love immediately it's like okay there's got to be something wrong with this movie and i can't find it in in this one there's no there's no part that pulls me out of it there's no part where i'm like well that could have been tightened up or that could have been better it's just yeah. it's such an amazing film and an achievement so well with the schedule that i keep i rarely get a chance to watch movies a second or third time um, because ah, i'm usually yes. moving on to the next one and sure. having to do all of that and this is one of the few films that i i watched in the theater i loved it and then got out of the theater and said i can't wait to watch this again with my wife watch it again you know before awards watch it again i, I just couldn't wait to see it again and that doesn't happen that often with films usually i'm just quickly yep. moving on to the next thing 
and I watched it the second and third time that I, I have seen the film and loved it just as much, if not more, every single time I've seen it. So I would agree. It's about as close to perfect as you get in a film. Uh, and, and again, it just kept popping up everywhere yeah. when I was trying to think about what some of the best things that were done in Hollywood this year. It kept popping up in every category for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, and of course, being a Marvel movie fan, there were there were a few Marvel movies this year and I like them. But I'm also my my kind of criteria from this was um, or for this from this for this was to this. what what's uh, you know, what are the ones that have stuck out and really stayed with me? Um, and uh, on that note, another one is Nope. Mm, uh, yes. I, I completely love that movie. I'm I'm not uh, as we've discussed before. I'm not really big on um, horror movies, and I don't really, uh, honestly, I don't really kind of consider that one a horror movie. But uh, it was just that was a fun movie. Uh, Jordan Peele, to me, is kind of becoming, um, in a way, almost our kind of modern day Alfred Hitchcock because he just does movies that are big even when he didn't really necessarily have the money to make them look big but they are big and i don't mean like you know huge uh you know star wars prequel spectacles i mean kind of you know, big concepts and big stories that kind of surprise you and take you in directions you don't expect so uh, nope uh, just amazing in that regard uh really loved it uh another one that has kind of stuck with me uh is prey um, who, who knew that someone could make just an amazing predator movie that wasn't really necessarily about the predator, <laughs> yeah. uh, that just was such a fantastic movie. And of course the dog, yes, did steal the movie. So oh, absolutely. I feel like Joe, you and I may have the, the same list for some of our favorite <laughs> films of the year, because I'm literally just checking them off here as you mentioned them. And I'm like, yep, that was, that was one of the ones I love too. Yep. That was one of the ones I love too. So apparently we have very uh, similar tastes when it comes to, uh, when it comes to these things. <laughs> well, yeah. I think uh, Nope is definitely kind of a horror film. No, there is actually it a blood falls yeah. in the sky, right? You yes, that that's, part? True. Okay, that's yeah. true. Oh, no, yeah. that's on my list too. And everything everywhere all at once, of course, is probably at the top, maybe yeah. close to the top. But yeah, it's just that's just a great movie and such a great love story and such a great sort of everything. And it's such a singular well, I should say singular vision, but it's actually the vision of two people, which is weird. Yes. Uh, the Daniels. Um it's just yeah, it's it's a terrific film. And Rick, you're and both of you guys, it's like I'm I feel the same way. I've watched it probably five or six times now and I don't get bored and I keep finding new things in it. It's just that good. So Well, can I bring yes. up one that I suspect <clears throat> might not be on everyone's list? Yeah, here? yeah, go yeah. I absolutely loved. I love this is a very this might be a hot take, this might be a controversial take. I absolutely loved Clerks Three. Wow. Yes. Stay out of my head, Rick. <laughs> I absolutely love Clerks Three. The my review of it was was actually titled, you know, how Kevin Smith made me cry because yes. I was bawling while watching that film. Uh-huh. I did not expect a the, a Clerks sequel to put me in that sort of um, um, put me through that sort of emotional ringer, but it did. Um, and I'm you know I I realize and I'm very aware of the fact that it is because of where I was at the time, maybe when the first Clerks came out, where I was in my life, where I, and as well as where I am in my life now. And that film hit all the right emotional sort of buttons for me to really connect with and to connect with what was going on with the characters and connect with the the arc that those characters have had. And, you know, being aware of how personal it was and how sort of biographical in some ways it was with, with Kevin Smith's life and... All of these other factors kind of came together, and that movie just punched me right in the heart. Like I remember coming upstairs uh, from my movie room to my family, and after watching it, and I was there was tears running down my face, and my wife was like, "What were you watching down there that you are like like this?" I'm like, <laughs> "Clerks Three. She's like, "Seriously?" Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Yep. It was. It it rocked me, and uh, yeah, it was one of my favorite movies of the year that I know won't be on many people's favorite movies of the year list, but for me, it, very specifically, it. It, it, it hit me. It got me. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I was in the same place with the original. Um, oddly enough, uh, even more poignantly, uh, Clerks 2 kind of hit me in the same place that the characters were in that movie at the time it came out. And so you're right. Clerks 3 was just like, wow, that... I Again, I would never expect to get that emotional with a Kevin Smith movie. And um, 
it was maybe one of the most, uh, in that regard, one of the most beautiful movies of the year. Cause it was just like, wow, that I, I did not expect that. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess I didn't have the same emotional reaction to clerics three as you guys, but, uh, it was, I enjoyed it and I, I felt like it was, you know, it, kind of, I, I don't know, maybe I was in the wrong space, <laughs> <clears throat> you know, emotionally, but I wasn't as in touch with my emotions during that screening as I was, uh, from a couple of other things, but uh, yeah, it's still it's still a good movie, and I still enjoyed it. I think it's his best movie in a while for sure, which I like. Yeah, but uh, well, on the uh, the animated front though too, uh, I yeah. mentioned earlier circling back, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio I found mm-hmm. amazing. It hit me uh, really emotionally in some some really powerful ways. I thought in it was, feels yeah, it was yeah. really brilliantly yeah. done. Um, I am a sucker for stop motion animation. I absolutely loved mm, yes. uh, what was done in there. The the beauty and the detail uh, that was clearly put in there's so much heart and effort put into it um but also another one that i love along those same sort of lines uh, marcel the shell with shoes on i'm not sure uh, how many folks have have been able to see it because it didn't have a huge release but i that movie was a beautiful little movie that i am looking forward to watching uh, another time with uh, with my kids it was this touching little movie about a little shell that on his on an adventure to you know find oh, yes. to find its family um and i thought it was it kind of came out of nowhere to be to surprise me and really have this dramatic heft that i did not anticipate it having uh so uh, anyone who hasn't seen it yet definitely search it out too because that one was a beautiful one to watch with the family that uh in all the right ways like in all the ways that you want a film to be to have a good experience with your family and have it raise really, you know, good questions with your kids and not have yeah. it, you know, and not have it be too dark or too, <laughs> or too serious. It was just a fun, yeah. cute little film that really did nothing wrong uh, when I was watching it. I, I loved it. That's awesome. Yeah. I've never seen that one. So that's a good, uh, that's a good family film. Okay, good. We don't watch as many movies together as we should. My son's yeah, more interested go. in playing, uh, Playing Roblox or something, but I'll try to I'll try to rope him in for something if it's a good uh, if it's a good thing. But uh, actually, a, a movie that neither one of you mentioned, which I don't know if, if uh, is on your list at all, but one of my favorite films this past year was the Indian uh, epic action film RRR. Yeah, that was so good. Yeah, did you guys, Rick, did you see that? Oh yeah, yeah. It's oh, okay. It's amazing, but it's also one of those films where you you know it's three plus hours long, yeah. and yeah. you kind of have to. I I. Ref, I put off seeing it for the longest amount of time because I just didn't have the three yeah. plus and I didn't want to break it up into parts. And so I, no, I didn't got to experience to... it all together. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it lived up to all the hype, which, you know, doesn't prove true for a lot of films uh, where they have this massive amount of hype behind them. Everyone's talking about them. Everyone's, you know, sharing, you know, scenes from them. Everyone's buzzing about them. And then you watch and you're kind of like, ah, it's okay. But this one, yeah, it was yeah. epic. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is that that's actually a movie that my son and I watched together. Oh, nice. He not only sat through a three-hour-plus movie in a, in a foreign language with subtitles and loved every second of it. I mean, it was a little... I, I didn't realize it was going to be quite so violent at certain points, um, so I covered his eyes a little bit. But, <laughs> nice. uh, but it was like... He, he was riveted. And, I, and there's, a, there's a sequence when the two friends... It's a great movie if you haven't seen it. It's it's terrific. Everybody, I recommend it highly to everybody. But the two friends are like having a dance-off as they do in, in Indian films. <laughs> And I'm like, that guy is going to blow it on purpose to help his friend get the girl. Right. Exactly. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, watch. He's going to blow it. And he does. And he's like, oh, wow. That's so I'm like, yeah, of course he was. They're best, they're best friends. They're best bros. You know, yep. he, the one guy is not going to step on the other guy's toes. He's going to help him get the girl because that's what they do. And of course, they'll find out their secrets later and they'll still be friends. Maybe. Who knows what will happen? <laughs> the drama will ensue. But it's, it's such a great film. I loved it so much. And I've watched that, believe it or not, twice already. So it's just... It never gets it never gets old, and the t- I mean, everyone talks about the CG and everything. Oh, the only thing that bothered him was he was worried about the tiger, and I'm like, that's, oh, that's a, that's a CG tiger. Don't worry, it's okay. Yeah, it's like it's gonna be okay. But like when they all jump out of the cages and the oh god, it's so epic, it's amazing. I love but, that that uh, was the thing that he was concerned about was the tiger. That is yeah. that that <laughs> speaks volumes to to the empathy that is there, and that that's that's great. Not worried about the people getting shot or anything, but no, it's a tiger. No, no. He was like, was the tiger going to be okay? I'm like, yes, it's a fake tiger. They're not going to have a tiger like that. Although it's, you know, in another country, maybe they can. I don't know. But uh, <clears throat> it was just that good, though. I, I, I really loved it a lot. And I would I would recommend it to anybody. Try to get past the language barrier if you can, if that bothers you. Subtitles bother you. But at its heart, it's this really good bromance. And it's a spy sort of, in, there's intrigue and there's drama and there's a historical context. It's just got it all, basically. And, of course, amazing action, too, so. 
Yeah, absolutely. Can't say enough nice things about it. <laughs> I co sign on all of that. Mm. Exactly. There's a there's actually a couple that I feel like <sighs> were overlooked this year that sure. I thought were um, fantastic movies. Um, and maybe it's because they were earlier in the year. Uh, first is uh, Death on the Nile. And it's my oh, opinion yeah. that uh, let Branagh, Kenneth Branagh, make um, Ag- Agatha Christie movies forever. Uh, I just thought it was great. I loved um, uh, Orient Express uh, uh, when he made that. Death on an Isle was great. I know he's signed up to do another one. And it was just, uh, you know, I, I'm a sucker for whodunit movies, even ones that I've read <laughs> multiple times. Uh, I just, he, he, brings in such a great cast uh for these movies so far uh and he's you know say think what you want about him i know there's mixed opinions about whether he's a decent person or not and i think some of those may be based on characters he's played but um i i just think he's a pretty fantastic director especially for this type of movie um so that one i really love the other one that i think was also an exceptionally well done movie that people overlooked was bullet train. I thought bullet train was just, if you Mm. looking at that movie, seeing how it was constructed and put together is just, uh, kind of amazing to me. I I really love bullet train as well. So those are a couple I'll throw out there that other people probably don't have on their list either. Yeah. I like bullet train. Actually, I like Brian Tyree Henry. So if, uh, he and, uh, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson guys with three names, apparently, uh, are, are terrific in the movie together, especially, um, and Brad Pitt, of course, you can't really go sure. wrong with Brad Pitt. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I actually enjoyed that more than I thought I was going to. Um, but uh, uh, it's not for everybody, for sure. It's but it's kind of violent, but that's okay. It's yeah. fun. It's a it's, it's a fun. You know, it yeah. delivers on exactly the the promise that it makes. And if you've seen yes. a trailer, if you've <laughs> yes. seen any clips of it, if yeah. you see that and say, "Huh, that looks interesting," or looks like something I might enjoy. You will enjoy it like that. Yeah. I think there's something to be said for that. You know, we're about movies delivering on on the promise of of the previews, of the promotion, of things like that, where they don't. You know, it's not a bait and switch thing. It's not a different. T- it's exactly the movie it presents, and it does yep. it really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's you're absolutely right. That's the thing that about about trailers, and that's the thing about movies. Not every movie has to be has to make you think so much, right? You just be entertaining is good to be. That's why everyone has, a lot of, or a lot of people, I should say, I probably have Top Gun Maverick on their list mm-hmm. because not maybe not you guys, but uh, it's a great movie. Yeah, because it's inter- because it's entertaining and Tom Cruise is great in it, and everybody's it's fun and it's you know epic and blah, you know rah rah America, all that stuff. Um, but I wouldn't say it's like you know it doesn't. You're not required to think too much to watch it. It's definitely more of a, a of a you know a, a piece of bubblegum entertainment, which is not terrible or popcorn entertainment, I guess is what I mean. But uh, it's still you know it's still a great movie. I still enjoy it. It's still made a shit ton of money, so I guess yeah, that's it did. too. So. Yes. <laughs> Thank, don't bet against Tom Cruise or Jim Cameron, I guess either. Although I've not seen Avatar: Way of Water. Uh, I know Rick did, but yeah, he doesn't have to tell us about it though. It's you know. <sighs> The first, I've mentioned this in my review of it, we live in a different time than 2009 when the first Avatar came out. The first Avatar came out and I saw it in the highest end theater that you could possibly see it in, in Manhattan, you know, it was the one that was like, you know, 3D, uh, IMAX, like every, like, you know, it was a very expensive sort of like production and, uh, and presentation and it blew me away and it was amazing. But as I mentioned in my review of it, like in 2009, the Marvel Cinematic Universe was was two films deep at that point. Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, you know, this was just after... We didn't even have the DCEU, um, you know, there, we didn't even have... We, we were just a few years separated from the last of the prequel Star Wars movies. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, at that point, <laughs> Avatar was the most groundbreaking visual effects, you know, visual experience that you could possibly get if you see it in the best theater possible like it was, unlike anything else. Cut to 13 years later, and Avatar The Way of Water is, again, it's a beautiful visual experience. It's gorgeous. You, it's worth seeing, you know, the super expensive ticket um, in the, you know, three... I saw it 3D, high frame, you know, the HFR, um, I, you know, IMAX, whatever it is. Like, I got, like, the most expensive sort of presentation sure. that you could have because I felt that that was necessary for this. And it lived up to that ticket price, but again, it was about as hollow as the first one was for everything yeah. behind it. And yeah. that's where I kind of left the theater feeling like, oh, well, it's a different time now and we're kind of used to great visuals. And I feel like we've gotten accustomed to and come to expect these amazing visuals from really expensive tentpole films like that. And so we're kind of looking for more now. And and this sort of didn't deliver 
past that in, in my mind. Like it was, it looked beautiful, as beautiful as you you would hope. But beyond that, it was just as kind of empty beyond that, and sort of familiar as, as the first one was. And you know, I gave it a good review, but it's it's if you're going for just the visuals, it's fine. But yeah. um, I uh, I saw it. Your, your list, right? <laughs> No, no, it did not make my best of the year list. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Just well, checking. so so I saw it. I had a little bit of a different take. So again, uh, Avatar, <coughs> the first one, blew me blew me away when I saw it, and uh, I I have been a fan of James Cameron's movies and his movie making uh, for you know going all the way back to Terminator. Um, not necessarily, uh, I think he doesn't do himself any favors when he does interviews and maybe he shouldn't do them. Um, but having said that, I, I thought Avatar was fantastic. Um, I, you know, immediately sought out the director's cuts when they came out. Cause I'm like, I want more. Um, I was, uh, kind of bummed that uh, we don't get to see more of this universe, but eventually it was like, yeah, I've had all these sequels. We're going to do them. Um, my, uh, I had liked The Way of Water. I liked it a lot. My problem with it, though, was I kept getting distracted by... So you you told this full story in the first movie, and the second movie is the first of, uh, you know, four more sequels. There was... It, I don't know how to describe this. It seemed there was too much of putting pieces back to carry the story forward. It was like, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done away with these characters or actors from the first movie. So how do I get them back into it and continue their story forward? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Do you, does that make any sense, Rick? Have, absolutely. You seen it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That felt, you know, and I think it just kind of, I guess I wanted something that didn't feel nearly as familiar. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I kept yeah. coming back to that because I, I left, I left the theater feeling, oh, okay. It's like, I just saw, you know, Avatar again, but none mm -hmm. of the things that I had a maybe over time had a problem with and sort of thinking about the first film were ever really addressed or fixed. There was just more of the things that it, the first film did really, really well to kind of distract you from the things that maybe it didn't. And I, you know, for me, I love the first Avatar so much that I've literally never watched it again. I saw it one time and one wow. time only because the experience was so powerful of watching it in the theater and, and that I did. And it, I, it could never be replicated again. I've always been afraid of sort of uh, reducing that sort of, uh, you know, reducing or sort of diminishing the feeling I get about the first film by watching it again, either at home without all of that, those amazing, you know, AV sort of technology around me. Uh, so I've never actually watched it a second time after that experience because it, it's on a pedestal for me. And this one, you know, I had certain expectations going in and, and it met some of them and, you know, didn't others. It was Sam Worthington. That's who ruined it for you, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't the best part, but I did like I just, Zoe Saldana. Was was uh, I thought her yeah. character was fantastic but in you, it. But you yeah. look at him, and he's like a black hole of of charisma. He's got nothing. He's like there's nothing on the screen. I, I'm not no. I'm sure he's a great guy in person, nice person, whatever. But he's just he's got nothing. I like him in these movies, though. I I just feel like this one would have it would have worked better if it wasn't. 12 years or whatever 13 years or whatever later yeah. if it was Maybe. you know three or four years later i haven't and, seen it so i'm just speculating but yeah so. and he didn't have to like reset the table again <laughs> i think because yeah. now yeah, so, because so i want weaver's back right yeah. and also um other characters lang Stephen lang yeah, Stephen I, lang's back yeah playing but i want to see or? i want to it does make me like okay now that now that we've done that now i want to see the story that you're setting us up for. I'm, I'm excited. I'm still excited for that universe and that world. And I want to see what happens next. And I'm on board for however more yeah. sequels they want to do. I just wish that he, he, you know, and rightly so, because like I said, it's been 13 years. It's like, well, okay. So I got to remind and uh, everyone what this world is about and what's here and get Errol to set pieces. And it's like, if we didn't have to do that and the sequel was actually the next sequel, I think, um, it would be better, but it's still, still fantastic. And, you know, visuals are amazing, but I'm, I'm on think, board. Yeah, I'm on board. And I'm definitely still telling... buying the, you know, yeah. high end yeah. ticket for each of the following ones because the Absolutely. visual experience sure. lives up to yeah, it. But no, not everybody's going to do that. But to me, it's very telling whenever you see Jim Cameron interviewed that most of the time he's just talking about the technology because that's what he cares about. I had to invent yeah. new technology. I had to invent submarines. I had to invent this and that. He doesn't talk about the character. He doesn't talk, really talk about the story. He doesn't talk about anything like that. And I, I think that there's no denying that Jim Cameron is an amazing visual stylist, an innovator. But I don't know that he's got a heart. 
You know what I mean? It's like ah. the characters to me, you're just like, eh. Are you calling him a Terminator? I don't know. <laughs> he will not stop, Rick. He absolutely will not stop until you're dead. No. This one it's definitely just, had uh, heart to it, though, I think. Did I mean, it? More so, Okay, because yeah. that's yeah. the thing that, that to me, I, I, the first Avatar felt hollow. Like I think Rick said that already. It's like it, was, it felt hollow. There was no emotional... At least when I was watching it, there was no emotional. As, matter, as much as they tried to make it that way, it's about family and all this. I felt like it maybe is because I was watching avatars. Yeah, you know, okay. At least, I see. And maybe yeah. if there were people, I know they were mocap people, and and in this they're still mocap. But it's like either make an animation or don't make an animation. Maybe that was the problem too, or the disconnect. But I didn't feel, I didn't feel an emotional connection to the first film, and I and I just don't think I will. There's more of that here, I will yeah. say, for sure. Well, I'm going to see it. Obviously, I'll, yeah. I'll see. I pretty much try to see everything. But uh, but I will try to go to a high-end theater because uh, I feel like it definitely needs to be seen in a theater, for one thing. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, and just, I think, it's just not something I'm... Cl- everyone's like, oh, the Avatar, Way of Water. I don't know. I'm well, like, what, oh, you know, one of the things, Chris, you and I have talked about is how some movies and some stories uh, uh, hit us differently. <clears throat> I'm sure Rick has experienced yeah. this as well. Hits us differently now that we're uh, parents of a number of years and things like that. And I think think this one will have a better connection in that regard for you. Yeah, because when this one came out, I had a different wife and no children. Yeah, see? So (laughs) So I think this one, I don't know. I I think there is a lot of heart in this, and there is uh, some good emotion. I think it it was too... But but Sam Worthington is in the movie, though, right? (laughs) Yes, right, he's just, in the movie. Just, just right, Zoe Saldana's that. character, I think, is, is phenomenal. I think they do a great yeah. job of translating uh, her yeah. sort of emotional arc from you know over the She's course great. of the film. I love her. And yeah. Yeah. I think it, it does a much better job this time around. I'll totally agree with Joe. They did a much better job of, of okay. hitting some dramatic you know All some right. dramatic well, beats this time around. So I, I take your guys' word for it. I, yeah. I, I trust you guys. So I'm sure it's it, it's it's the way it is. I just we've taken up a lot of time talking about Avatar, which is not our favorite film for 2020. I know it's yeah, no it's Clerks Three, is what I'm trying it's to no say. Yeah. It's no That's Clerks the, Three. <laughs> it's no The Batman, which is also on my list of one of my favorite films of 2020. Oh yeah, yes. Uh, I don't know. I was like, another Batman film, really? Come on, guys. But then, and people were like, not on the R. Pat's, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> bandwagon. Like yes. Robert Pattinson, that guy's a fucking vampire, or whatever. I don't know. But I, I believed it. I believed he could do it. I believed that uh, that it was going to turn out, and, and it did. And it, it delivered to me. I think one of my favorite Batman films. Uh, for a long, I mean, I love Nolan's Batman take, but I really enjoyed this a lot, and I'm looking forward to the next one because it's just, yeah, it was a different way to go, and I think it worked. Um, and that's no one small. That's no small uh, thanks to Matt Reeves either for for bringing it together. But it's just, I, I enjoyed the movie a lot, and you know, another Zoe, Zoe Kravitz was also terrific in the film as well, and Absolutely. Colin Farrell yeah. and, and everybody else. But yeah, it's on my list. Um, actually, I have two Colin Farrell movies on my list, but I'll get to that one in a minute. But uh, I agree. About like- Batman was fantastic. Batman was <laughs> yeah. very, very good. Um, I've been uh, surprisingly, uh, even to myself, on board uh, <laughs> Robert Pattinson as as Batman um, <laughs> yeah. since the f- initial announcement because you know it was one of those things where it was announced, and I remember writing a, a op ed about like, hey, actually, I. I, I think I'm okay with this. Like, I think yeah. I'm, and now that I give it a sort of like, I think I'm totally okay with this because it feels like he could play both Bruce Wayne and Batman, which has always been, I think, over time, do they sometimes, some of the actors have played a better Bruce Wayne than a Batman, and some have been a better Batman than a Bruce Wayne. And I feel like Robert Pattinson could have hit that that happy medium between the two. And he yeah. did. And I think he, he did a great job of it in this one. My only complaint about the film, I think, was I feel like. Um, uh, Paul Dano was totally underutilized as, as his yeah, character. Definitely. That was yeah, my only absolutely. criticism. Criminally of underutilized, it. literally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like he's an amazing actor who could have been so much more, and I feel like he was a bit underutilized uh, in the film because I wanted to see more of him and his character in it. Well, you can come back in the sequel with him and him and unidentified person in asylum can be uh, <laughs> yes. yes can be can be together and yes, make some yes. havoc. Um, but we're also getting a sequel to Joker, too, so there you go. Who knows what's going to happen there. But No, uh, I, I really like the Batman, and I felt this was like, uh, like you said, that um, this was the first kind of Batman film in a long time where I felt that Bruce Wayne and Batman were the same character. Uh, you know, they always yeah. kind of play it where, oh, Bruce Wayne is the, does it, does this, yeah, the disguise, and Batman is the character, or, you know, the other way around. And this time I felt like he was... He was the same character, and again, it was another movie that was really long, but it didn't feel like it watching no, it. It's like, oh, no. this is really, really well done. Um, and you know, we've discussed before my feeling that if you're going to do a sequel or 
uh, a reboot something or or something like that you should do a different take on it and i felt mm -hmm. like matt reeves had a good vision for this um i honestly i've already always kind of been a fan of uh pattinson um despite the uh <laughs> the twilight films uh, he's a really good actor he knows yeah. he knows his craft and he's uh grown over the years and done really well so i was excited that it's like oh you know someone that is an actor playing this role as opposed to someone that's like oh you know i've been a batman fan all my life and i just want to you know play make-believe not that uh, i don't want to diminish the other actors that have done that but um he's yeah I, I thought it was well done i'm looking forward to the second i hope despite them saying oh we're not integrating him into the dcu which seems kind of weird it's like mm -hmm. so you're just going to keep making these i don't understand but infinite it's infinite earths no one yes. knows what's going on earths. with the. Yeah. is there even a dceu at this point like uh, at this point knows? everything there will be, be up in yeah. The air. yeah yeah james gunn's in a dceu that's what it is yes but so. I, I i would watch more of these and um I'm glad they didn't go the the origin route because I, I don't think we need another yeah. Superman or Batman origin movie at this point. Everybody knows how they became. Yeah, his parents got killed. Everyone knows. Right. Yeah, we don't um, need that. Don't need Spider Man. We're done with the origin story. Yes. I did, I yes. did. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that was was strong for me in the movie was that it was a younger Batman. I mean, it only been sort of becoming Batman for like the last year or so when the movie yeah. starts. He made and mistakes, that, which was he great. made mistakes. Yeah. He wasn't. He hadn't perfected it yet. He wasn't the world weary. Batman, even Christian Bale was older when he started out in Dark Knight. I mean, it's yeah. just, they had seen some shit, you know? <clears throat> and this guy is just, I'm going to put on a cowl and go beat some people up, you know, kind of shit. Yeah. And so he's just trying stuff out, which I really enjoyed. And I, I agree with you 100%. It was, I think, even as good as Bale was, I thought, it still seemed like he was just waiting for the moment where he could put the bat suit on. Whereas yeah. I really got the feeling that that Pattinson was Bruce Wayne, who also was this other character that he just his persona. But they were two separate people, but also the same person in a way. And that I think doesn't come through necessarily on in the other films as much as it did in this. And I've always, and again, I've been a fan of his too. I thought both he and Kristen Stewart were much better than the Twilight movies. And yes. they, they did the best they could with the material. I mean, Taylor Lautner fit in perfectly in those movies, but <laughs> I think they were they were much better than the material they were given, and I feel like they've both proven that over the years. So, Well, the, the biggest thing that I love Matt Reeves for bringing back into this is that he <clears throat> made Batman a detective again, which yes. was, yeah, has been missing for a long time, and that part was great. So it, to me, it was kind of like, much like cops put on their uniform when they go to work, he puts on he his uniform suit, when yeah. he goes to work. Yeah. So it was... And that was a great part of it. I, yeah. I, I think you're right. Uh, he was the world's greatest detective, right? That's yeah, kind of, yeah. It's sort of never the, comes... you know, the, the story. Like he's kind he's of in the title. to be exactly. the greatest detective. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was that, good that, to have seen that again. Yeah, it does come through a tiny bit in the in the Nolan films. That that was not what Nolan was sort of no. interested in. But no. uh, it also felt like some of the the Nolan films were more based around the fact that he was super rich rather than the uh, greatest detective ever, and that he could throw yeah. money yeah, at exactly. things to solve them. Yeah. Where this one oh. felt like there was this sort of gritty detective aspect to the character, yeah. which is weird to say about, you know, Robert Pattinson playing this role. Like, there was a yeah. grittiness to it. But uh, it felt that way when watching it, where I felt like with the, the Nolan and, and uh, you know, Christian Bale, Batman, that there was just a lot of, well, I, I have all of this money to create all of these things that make it easier for me to do all of these things. And right. that, that seemed to come yes. into play way too often. Like, I already have a company that and a guy working there who can make all this shit yeah. anyway. So yeah. why not just, you, yeah. this is all your stuff anyway. Yeah, we so, need to know. do this thing. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll send it to my R&D department. You yeah, know? Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Or we I'll buy, buy the company and yeah. make it We better. have to buy 10,000 yeah. units of this to hide it. And, you know, <laughs> I, I, yeah. No, it's true. It, it, it's absolutely true. No, it, it's, uh, it was a good take on it, and I, I look forward to seeing more. But yeah, whether they integrate them into the, into the larger DCEU or not, I mean, I don't think it really matters. You can have another no. Batman. I mean, Ben Affleck can come back. I mean, literally Ben Affleck's character in, what does he say, in Justice League, I, what's your superpower? I'm rich. I mean, that's absolutely, <laughs> yes, it's absolutely true. He's driving the, you know, the super expensive car. I bought the bank, you know, that's how I saved your mom's house. Um, right. Yeah. So I, I bought the hotel or something like that. That was yeah. in, the, in the Nolan. Yeah. And then this one, it was, it was gritty. I think that's the, the, the actual thing that you're nailing right now is that it was gritty and I appreciated that. So anyway. Street level, as they say. Street level, baby. Yes. That's the answer. Street <laughs> level. Um, 
before we before we move on to 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 TV and streaming stuff, um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is one of my favorite films this year, and also a great movie. If you like a movie about two guys just sitting around in a pub, <laughs> I know what you're gonna if say. I yeah. Fucking love this movie, man. The Banshees of Instrument. It's fucking yes. amazing. Yes. It's so funny to watch. It's like. I don't want to be your friend anymore. That's the premise of the movie. Yes. Brendan Gleeson is terrific. Colin Farrell is terrific. I mean, in the donkey, come on, the donkey is adorable. I love you. <laughs> just summed it up like so perfectly. I don't want to be your friend anymore. And then a yeah, movie that's the, ensues. That's the movie. And like, and it's like he's he's like, what? Why? <laughs> and the rest of the movie is like, just like what? Why don't you want to be my friend? What Did happened? I do something wrong? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so. It is so good, and they are so perfect in it, and. You just get the feeling that these guys inhabit this town, and like all these people are so real. And I, I mean, I say I know it's a movie, but it's like I was captivated from moment one. I always I yes. I bought into it completely, yeah. and it was just it's a great film. It's not a movie necessarily for nerds. I mean, because there's no explosions or anything. It's a it's a smaller movie, but if you like Colin Farrell, it's worth checking out. If you like Brendan Gleeson, who's a terrific actor who doesn't get enough credit for things, I don't think. I mean, I guess people think he's good, but I mean, like he's not like a superstar. Um, but he should be. While but watching it, I just kept thinking, like, this <clears throat> is this plot that you summed up so perfectly there. Uh, yeah. This plot is also the plot of, like, so many teen comedies and, yeah. and yes. teen movies. And yeah. it's been sort of transported into <laughs> this small Irish town um, yeah. premise with these adult men. And I found that to be there's just this beautiful aspect of it because this one concept can be just brought over to here and it can also be fascinating. Like what we might make fun of being in a, being the premise of a teen movie can yeah. also seem amazingly dramatic with these actors in this setting uh, and so on and so forth. And I, there, I had a lot of thoughts about that. Like afterwards, I'm like, oh, have I not been giving these teen comedies, you know, their fair due? <laughs> I'm okay with this now when it's in a set in a small Irish town with, with two right. men. Yeah, I got, a, I got a little bit of a Mean Girls vibe during the movie. Yes. Yeah. Definitely, yes. We, you can't sit with us or whatever. It's like, you can't sit here anymore or whatever in the, in the pub. It's like, well, my drink's here. Like, yeah, it's so bad. Find another seat. You know? <laughs> um, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a, I hate to use the word touching, but it does, you know, it is very emotional too. And I don't want to, I don't think sad is the word, but it's like, uh, maybe the, the teen comedies are, are exploring more of the human condition than we think they are. And there's more, there's more layers there, but uh, right. I think everybody can relate to this kind of thing. Everyone can relate to, you know, confusion and disappointment and, you know, and maybe you didn't get to achieve what you wanted to achieve in life, or maybe this is like your last chance or, you know, a lot of people can relate to that. So that's, I think that's why the movie resonates. But also, it's just because everything about it is so, you know, I hate to say the word believable, but it's just so, you. I bought into it. I really did. And I believe these guys live in this town and have these conversations, and these are all real people just talking, going up with their lives. And I'm just a voyeur watching this thing unfold, and it was just that good to me. Well, so. the actors were amazing as well, of course. But, yeah, I yeah. agree with you that it was yeah. just, I, I often, <clears throat> you know, some of my favorite movies of all time are these, like, kind of snapshot slice of life yeah exactly. you know here here's a moment in time and there's no there's no like you know you know huge reveal or there's no like you know universe shattering you know stakes it's just here's here's a small town and a group of people and these two guys what happens with them and go and it's yeah. just some of those movies are the most amazing movies to watch and this one yeah, absolutely i agree with that i agree with you yeah it's 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 excellent. I mean, again, it's not necessarily our demographic, but uh, but I like I like quality movies, and yes. uh, you know, I I definitely want to bring it up. I mean, I don't know that RRR would be our demographic, you know, for nerds or geeks sure, or whatever. Sure. But it's just it's it's just so cool, you know. And it's a foreign language film, and people don't necessarily like subtitles or whatever. But I don't know. I just people should see it, and people should see this too because it's a small film. I mean, that's getting some buzz because you know uh, Oscar time nominations or whatever. Yeah. But I, I don't think enough people are talking about it, and I think that people should watch it so anyway should we go on to tv and streaming yes i have a lot more there <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go first this time i'm gonna beat you yes. guys to the punch and say andor boo i win <laughs> uh, so hot take here i didn't love ah, it nearly as much as oh, everyone else like Rick, and the I've, contrarian I like i've it. had this sort of discussion with a few people and i'm still sort of trying to figure out what it was about it that didn't that didn't grab me the way it did other I think it was yeah. you know it's a phenomenal show but it wasn't even my favorite of the Star Wars 
live action series like so oh, far and okay. and I see a lot of people like saying this Bold is move. the new standard this is you know this raised the bar and I was kind of like oh it's different and it's weird because I love Rogue One was my top one of my top 3 Star Wars yeah. movies ever made like I yeah. love Rogue One but for some reason Andor just didn't grab me hmm. interesting the way some of the other Star Wars series have. Like, what's your What's your favorite Star Wars? I mean, obviously, I think I still think Mandalorian yes. is my favorite Star Wars. Mandalorian, series, but I would say that this is probably number two. Mandal, yeah, man. I mean, we don't have a whole. There's not a huge pool of 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 live True. action ones, but yeah, Mandalorian's my definitely. It's not my Book favorite. of Boba Fett. I can tell you that. Right, and uh, <laughs> Obi Wan, yes. you know, is is probably Book of Boba Fett and Obi Wan are kind of right in the same. I think I may have liked Obi Wan more than Boba Fett. But, yeah, I like Ewan McGregor, so it's hard to yeah. not like him. Yeah, but. yeah, and I felt like Boba Fett like treaded water for most of it. See, but Andor, yeah. I felt, was you know sort of plotting <clears throat> and took so long to get where it needed to go. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I feel like it could have been condensed a bit more. Like I, I feel like it just took a long time, tread a little bit too much water to get where it needed to get and to do the things that it wanted to do and say about yeah. um, Cassie and Andor and and the environment that he was working in but fantastic show but yeah, yeah i just I, I i you talking about it as the best one just sort of brought up all these conversations <laughs> i've been having lately about no, it that's that's good that's i appreciate that yeah uh, i just thought it was my favorite probably my favorite star wars show of the year um it's just it does start i mean i think partially that has to do with covid and then it stopped production and they retooled a bit and they re, and they came back and they had more of a focus maybe they're making it who knows maybe they're making a completely different show for the first couple of episodes and then they had to think about it again, or maybe they realized it wasn't working as well as they were hoping. Um, but after that, I think I got going, and then yeah, they do spend some time in certain places. But that to me was okay. I was I was into it by then, and I I, I know I figured that they were going to a certain place, and and they got there. Um, but yeah, it is it's more. I always think of it as like deliberate. It's a very deliberate show. Yes, they don't they don't rush through things. And yeah, they could have maybe had that that heist thing happen in two episodes instead of three, um, maybe. But then there was a like character development, and, and some of that stuff pays off later. Yeah. So you you have to have these characters have these experiences, and then because uh, basically you're telling the story of why does Cassian sacrifice his life yeah. for this cause? Why? You yeah. know, And now you have to know why. And this is one of the reasons that he does, or these are several of the reasons that he does. Why does this guy become a believer in such a hardcore believer? And you know that takes time sometimes. So well, that was anyways. one of the weird story threads that I just never quite figured out, or why it was even in there. Because I'm like, I, I yeah. don't know quite why mm. I need to know about this um, imperial agent's relationship with his mother. Like, I'm just not sure <laughs> how. Like, because we, that's fun. Yeah. Man. <laughs> like that imperial agent character, they spent so much time on, and yeah. I felt like that was one of those areas where. Like, I don't know if that did what they accomplished with that thread, but maybe it will pay off later, and that's what it seems like it'll pay, pay off, off the down second. the road. It paid off when, when he and the, and the, the woman uh, from the Empire were in that little tiny closet together. <laughs> that, paid, that was the payoff well, right there. Well, it, it's all, I mean, the show's all... But they didn't all, kiss, so it was good. The show's all about conviction, and yeah. <clears throat> are there, you know, are do, are you a, a true believer? Are you going to follow this this path despite everything that goes on. And I think for Cyril, that was kind of the thing. It's like you, the very thing that you are 100% a true believer in and behind has abandoned you. They've thrown you to the side and you have to go back home and live with mom. And despite all that and getting a low level job, he didn't, he was still like, no, this is something I'm very, I believe in this and I believe in the bigger thing. And I want to be a piece of this. Um, and he found, found his way to do that. And he was like, I'm going to go do this. So I think for him that it was all about, you know, what can we do to drive that conviction? But at the same time, it's like, okay, so this is where he gets that tenacity from because his mom was relentless. Mm -hmm. And it's like, despite him obviously not, uh, enjoying that and being against that, it's like, that's, that's where you got it from, dude. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I guess maybe, uh, I don't have the same, uh, kind of loving relationship with my mother. Everyone else does. So that, that part actually hit me, uh, a whole lot differently than I think everybody else in a, in, in a grander way. And I was like, I get that dude so much. <laughs> so, 
Uh, yeah, so no. She, she turned him to the dark side, is what you're saying? Yeah. So, And the other thing I'll say about Andor, uh, something that Rick said a moment ago, everyone is like, oh, this is the new standard and this is all this. And I'm like, no, that's not, that's why this is so good is it it shouldn't be the new standard. I still want to see Mandalorian, Book, Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka. I want to know about those characters and have the, you know, the magical fantasy part of Star Wars uh, that's a big part of it, but this was like here's a here's a side story because this universe is so big and so rich, we can tell this other story. I don't want uh, now I, I don't want 15 more shows that are just like Andor because uh, it'll, it'll dilute it and take away from it. But that isn't what necessarily Star Wars is all about. But it's like hey, we're going to show you this other piece for a little bit, and I think they can do that in different ways, like. Uh, uh, you know, like Star Trek, they bring in different genres. You can do that in Star Wars. So I don't, I don't want this to be the new bar and the new standard. I'm enjoying it because it is, uh, you know, a side quest basically, right? So yeah, kind of. Uh, you're gonna yeah. get a Kino Loy spinoff show. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> I'm sure they've already locked in Circus for that one. So. Yeah. You never see a body. That's all I'm saying. That's true. I, I I'd probably watch that, but this I shouldn't be the standard for all the Star Wars shows. No, I would but, watch that too. But. <clears throat> but because of Andy Serkis more than the character, although the character was interesting, but uh, I would definitely watch it. Yes, I but, mean what a what a what a great twist though uh, that I didn't that I really didn't see coming. It's like after all that, he can't swim, and he knew he wasn't going to get out of there. And the he whole knew time. he was exactly, and that's just it, I don't know. I found that I found that uh, very satisfying. But uh, yeah. but some people just some people have no heart, like Rick, I guess. So. <laughs> Wow. I'm Again, I loved Rogue One was was one of my favorite yeah, Star Wars films. Movie. And it's funny because I found myself differing with the same the same peop some people who sort of disagreed with me about Rogue One being as good as it was are now the same people disagreeing with me about Andor. And I find that really fascinating. And I've I've been oh, sort of funny, trying yeah. to dissect that in my mind, like why that would be the case that uh, you know, getting mocked for loving Rogue One as much as I did. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, Landor was okay. And they're like, how could you say it was just okay? This is one of the greatest Star Wars things You're ever traitor. made. Yeah. What the hell's wrong with you, man? <laughs> you don't like Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> I was into Star Wars for anybody, man. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We don't we don't have to talk about Andor all the time, but I just wanted to throw that out there because I figured it was on at least on Joe's list. But uh, yes. I, I've also got another one, uh, a show that uh, also is terrific, and another one where I didn't really see anything about where it was going or where it was coming from, and I just absolutely loved it and was riveted the entire time, which was Severance. Yeah, watch that show. I have not ah. seen Severance, so I can't even oh, weigh in on this. Dude. I have heard so many good things about it, but I have not it is, seen it yet. It is freaky, and 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 you will not. Uh, I love the fact that I couldn't figure it out, and I because yes. you know, as as we are pretty smart, the three of us, and have seen a lot of things, and you know, some of us have worked in the industry. And I understand story and how you know in the time how to tell a story on a TV show. I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, what is going to happen? And that wow. to me is is a, is a real treat. I'm like, because a lot of times I'm like, oh, he did it, or she did it, or that's this is going to happen, or whatever. But this, I was like, what is happening? I I'm totally riveted by this entire thing, and uh, and just I, I went on the journey. They wanted to go on a journey with me, and I and I went on the trip, and it was just it was it was cool. So um, it's funny you I mentioned that as being enough. the selling point for it, like not knowing where it's going, because that was mm -hmm. also the the premise for my reasons for loving a, another different show that I'm, I'm happy to get into. But we can keep talking Severance if you want. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. If you haven't no, seen it, that's ahead. fine. But uh, yeah. but yeah, what, what what's the thing you want to talk um, about? Uh, recency bias might be a play again too, but uh, 1899 on, on Netflix. Um, oh. just blew me away. <clears throat> it gave me that vibe that Lost gave me back in the day, like when I was first yeah. watching Lost. Yeah, and exactly. Yes. With a little bit less of the, like, you know, um, um, romantic sort of subplots that Lost had that I would sometimes get annoyed by, like, you know, oh my God, Sawyer, Juliet, and, you know, oh, Joy and Jack, who, who will they end up with? And yada. Like, it doesn't have any of that. It's Sawyer. just straight. Sawyer took his shirt off. Who's he going to attract this week? <laughs> oh yeah. And it was just straight, like, you know, <laughs> what is going on here? Weird things are happening. Every episode has some sort of strange thing going on. And yes. uh, that one, I. That one blew me away. I loved it by the you know creators of Dark, uh, which was similarly amazing, yeah. and uh, this one just gave me that exact lost like vibe that yeah. I had while watching yeah, the I first told, season yeah, of that show. It. Yeah, did you did you? I like the fact that you couldn't really understand everybody. Yes, 
Yes, and oh, that's why I've been recommending good. to people. I keep hearing people saying that, oh, yeah, I'm watching the English dubbed version. I'm like, no, no, no don't no, do no. that. Don't do that. Because the, the inability so to understand. so many languages. It was yeah. great. Yeah. The inability yeah, to understand the languages yeah. and their inability to understand each other. Each other. Is yeah. part yeah. of it. a huge yeah. part yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. No, it's a great show. I, I was, I was, I'd heard a few things about it, and I was like, I'm going to jump into this and see what happens. I was not disappointed. It was, uh, it was quite, a, quite another, another cool ride. Yeah, you're right, exactly. I didn't know where it was going to go, and I think part of that was just the language barrier too, which, and especially the choice of not to use subtitles sometimes. Which I thought yes, was too. yeah, yes. that's even better. You really don't, you <laughs> yeah. really don't know what's happening. Because you literally can't speak the language, so it was just—it was very clever. I thought. Yeah, that's one yes. of those those shows that, like, you watch every episode is sort of an event, and we like, you know, my, my wife and I, we would sit down and we would watch, and <laughs> just then, you know, episode would end, you'd be like, "What just happened?" And then have this long <laughs> discussion about what we yeah. think our theories are now, and each episode, we are like, "Oh well," Fun. and looking all the little breadcrumbs that are laid out in it, you know, from little things yeah. you see in the background or that people are wearing or color choices in the costuming. Everything Definitely. plays into this larger story, that this mystery that you're trying to figure out, and I thought it was just masterfully done, and I can't wait for more of it. I love that it that it, it. I don't want to spoil anything. That I love that it ends on another big twist that then yeah. teases more to come of this type of yes. what's going on. <laughs> Are they going to make another season? Or yeah. Another? Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Good. They should. Uh, Although it's yeah. Netflix, they'll so probably kill it after the first. God, season. I hope not. Oh no! It's well, the the happen. trend now is uh, things get renewed, and then a little while later, like, nah, we changed our mind. We're going to cancel it. And that's just not just Netflix either. Other, yeah. uh, well, we just recast it now. with a different actor. It'd be fine. Well, I feel like it was on the top ten for long for a long time, and Dark did so well for Netflix yeah. that I'm hoping yeah. That, yeah. that will sort of translate to this getting a bit more, you know, a longer leash and also a little bit more respect. They have having seen that's how well Dark did. That's up. Oh, when will Liam Hemsworth be appearing? In <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's taking over next season. He's taking over next season for everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's just—he's the go-to guy to recast for every show. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, what's on, what about you, Joe? Any streaming TV type stuff? Oh man, I've got that. That was the thing I did get to watch this year, and I have so many things. But I, I agree with uh, Severance um, in yeah. 1899. In fact, Severance ties for my favorite show of the year and i would say it's it's slightly edged out by outer range which oh. was uh so he, he, funny story i was uh i was not a fan of yellowstone i watched like the first like three or four episodes of yellowstone i'm like that's eh, not for me i'm just not that great about it so when i heard about outer range they're like oh it's like a uh a yellowstone with fantasy elements i was like well all right, I'll give it a try. I like the actors in it, and that you know, a lot of times that draws me to something. And Outer Range was another show where I'm like, I have no idea where this is going. I don't know what's going to happen, and it in it did not. Um, it wasn't one of those that like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna lead you through this and tell you everything that's going on. Um, it didn't even at the end of the season. I'm like, I still don't know what exactly is happening here, uh, but it had some good twists, um, some good reveals towards the end and just fantastic cast. Uh, it, it, it just, and it looked well. Um, I'm a sucker for Westerns anyway, which is why I'll always give them a try. Um, and this was kind of a, a you know, noir, uh, modern day Western type of show. Yeah. Um, but just really well done. A tight story, uh, great uh, acting uh, and performances. And uh, thankfully, uh, after a long, long wait, it got renewed because I'm excited to see what happens next. So twists, yeah. lots of twists. Yeah, yeah, that so. one was a great one. I agree with you on all fronts, and I, I agree with you in particular too on the selling it as Yellowstone sci-fi. Uh, yeah. almost turned me off of it as well because I was yeah. not a Yellowstone mm -hmm. fan, and I once I started watching it, I had the same sort of feelings like, oh wow, this is this is much better. This is totally different. What is going on? Yeah, yes, it's a good show. And Thanos is in it, so be careful. <laughs> That's right. He'll snap. Don't let him snap. Don't that let him would snap. Be bad. Yeah, you know, it'll be bad. Can but I yeah, just say that I feel like we we've gone three shows into this and yeah. and not mentioned what I would have expected to be the first show to even come up in this entire discussion. Wow, what was uh, that? Oh. Peacemaker. Well, I was getting there. I was getting there. <laughs> sure. I just felt like that was like such a a huge like cultural sort of you know zeitgeist around it but it was also you know back in january but i, I was just it was shocked yes. because i january, feel like that would have been oh the one God. that like 
comes to the top all the time, uh, as especially amongst the the crowds that we uh, that we <laughs> speak to. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was getting there because Peacemaker is great show, yeah. amazing again coming back, which is uh, a great thing, yeah. and just so. Over the, I don't know what it is about Gunn, which is why I'm also um, happy, I guess, that he's uh, shepherding the DC uh, film uh, films going forward. He has this, uh, I don't know, he almost shares with Kevin Smith with going way over the top and crossing lines, but it works. And maybe it's because of the actors that he has, but it was just... Uh, it, it was an un- unexpected show and I love Suicide Squad, his version, and this was a good extension, but even, even better in my opinion. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's my, my wife has zero interest in a lot of superhero shows or films or things like that. Uh, so I watch a lot of that stuff on my own, but this was one of the few ones where I, she heard so much about it and heard so many things that she seemed that her friends were talking about, uh, where she was like, okay. We got to. We have to watch this Peacemaker show uh, that every, you and everyone else keeps talking about. She's like, I think I. And so I made her sit down and watch Suicide Squad first, and we watched Peace. And she loved Peacemaker, and I think yeah. that speaks volumes to James Gunn's ability to make this thing that is funny for everyone. And, and while it's it is simultaneously insidery to us who know all of these, you know, B, C, D level characters, but also absolutely hilarious to everyone who has zero knowledge of them whatsoever just the actors that he brings in the the dialogue in particular is just so brilliant uh john cena i am not a wrestling fan and i was never a huge john cena fan i he was not the icon to me that he is to a lot of people and he's brilliant in it i was just blown away by him in it um like this guy's legit he's amazing uh so yeah Yeah. it was it was that's the one that probably goes down as is one of my favorite shows of the entire year and I would say yeah. uh, it's also one, probably the only show that every single episode I'll I will pay attention to and watch the opening credits. Yeah. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, James Gunn has got a really good a really good talent for also making you give a shit about the people too. Yes, it's not just explosions and heads blowing up and and, and outlandish action and comedy, which is he's great at. It's just you also, for some reason, he's really able to make you care about the characters in a short amount of time. And maybe that's just because he's a master manipulator. I don't know. But you actually, I mean, I cared about Peacemaker as a character, like his relationship with his father and all that. I mean, that that resonated with me. Uh, not because my dad's a white supremacist or anything, but just because <laughs> it was just, uh, you know, or, or, or tries to kill me. But it's just those kind of things. He's really good at that. And and it's it's a it's a rare thing sometimes in films, especially when you have five seconds to introduce a character and you rely on stereotypes and tropes and stuff so you can people can understand, oh, he's the bad guy, he's wearing a black hat, whatever. He's good at that. I mean, he's really good at that. And you and, and you definitely, I think that elevates his stuff to a different level um, than some of the other things. Like the original Suicide Squad movie had none of that. Right, yeah. yes. And you're like, uh, you know, whatever. And there's nothing against the director. I mean, the movie looked cool and it had some good action and stuff. And, 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 and even with Margot Robbie and Will Smith, it's still like, uh, you know. But in this, you, you you care. And he did the same thing with Suicide Squad. His version of it, it's like, you cared about Ratcatcher. Yes. Yeah. You know? Because he, he took a minute to explain her relationship with her, well, also with her father, oddly enough. <clears throat> and you, you cared. You cared about uh, Polka Dot Man or whatever his name was. Um, was it Polka Dot Man? <laughs> yes. It was, right? Yes. Because you care. I'm a goddamn superhero. And then when he died, spoilers, you, you cared. Yeah. yeah. You know? And, and that's, an amazing, that's an amazing gift that he has for that kind of thing. You care about a trash panda. You know? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Oh, now, that's what, that's the other thing I wanted to mention about everything all at once, which I totally forgot to mention. The reason, another reason that's such a great movie. And I know I'm going backwards now. I don't care because it's a, there's a scene with two rocks talking to each other, and you give a shit about the two rocks. It's emotional scene. It's an emotional scene <laughs> yes. of two rocks. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, but I just I digressed. But no. it's just Gunn is great at that, and that's why I think his stuff is so successful. And I think he's going to infuse that hopefully into into films in the DCU going forward. I think it's gonna it's a it was a great choice to pick him for that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, Peacemaker is awesome. Uh, I, it was a long road to get back to Peacemaker being awesome, but it was, and it is. I'm looking forward to season two. So yep. there's that. Oh, absolutely. Another uh, thing I'm going to pick that was uh, criminally overlooked this year, uh, sadly did not get renewed, mm-hmm. um, but I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the TV series, The Man Who Fell to Earth. Uh, it was an adaptation of the <coughs> book and um, a continuation 
of the film from the 70s starring David Bowie. Uh, yeah. Obviously, sadly, uh, Bowie's no longer with us and couldn't be in this, but um, it was... It was another mo- another show that I didn't know. I had no idea where it was going to go, and uh, I was along for the ride mainly just because of uh, uh, Chi uh, Egiofor. I always ha- uh, I have a hard time with his name, but uh, he uh, stars as the alien this time that comes to Earth. Naomi Harris is in it. Uh, she's fantastic. Bill Nighy. Uh, is who they brought in to reprise the character that David Bowie played from the film. And it's just this really interestingly constructed story. Um, and uh, oddly enough, it has it, it too has a lot of heart. It gives you characters that you care about. And it's um, even though it, it, it can be dark at times, it's really kind of an inspirational, uplifting story about, you know, follow your dreams and... Don't don't give up in a way. Um, it's full of uh, flawed and broken characters that kind of find through each other uh, a better way and a way forward. Um, there's some pretty evil characters in it as well, but it was uh, I don't know. It was a great show, and I'm really um, much like uh, if anyone remembers the show Journeyman back in the day i'm disappointed that this isn't going to continue because i really felt like they were just starting so anyway you gave uh, well. me the perfect segue by the way to uh talk about a, a show that i feel similarly about and that was also canceled uh, uh, oh man paper girls um yes on amazon uh. i thought the first season was absolutely brilliant it had so much heart and and brilliant performances all around and and created this wonderful like deep Universe, this world building was so f- phenomenal in it, and it had so many great actors in it, and so much great story. And it to find out that it was not being uh, renewed uh, just sort of broke my heart as well. Yep, I'm with you there. Uh, yeah, it's a bummer. That's a, that's a problem. There's a lot of things that are really good and people respond to, but it's just for some reason, for some inexplicable reason, it doesn't work with the algorithm, I guess, and it doesn't get back. So it's so it's sad. I wish they could renew everything. But uh, I can talk about a show that did get picked up for a second season, which I'm sure both of you guys probably enjoyed, and that is Sandman. Mm. Yes. yes. I don't want to forget about that one. Um, I was, uh, I'll be honest and say I'm not, uh, I have only read the first book, I think, or the first, or the comic. I can't remember what I got into, how I got into it first. Maybe it was the comic. Anyway, I, I was not a huge Sandman fan, or uh, I was definitely aware of it, but the show was awesome. I really loved it, and I thought... Uh, all the characters were interesting in the whole premise, and there were some really great standouts uh, in the show. And I'm really happy that it's going to get a second season. Uh, but as Joe and I, you and I have talked about, we definitely need a, a Constantine spinoff from the show, too. But, yeah, uh, absolutely. Because she's yeah, terrific. But, uh, yes. She's amazing in it. Um, I did a <clears throat> yeah. full reread of the entire series uh, yeah. right before watching it. Um, yeah. and, and I was shocked by how well it 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 actually... It, it, improves upon the story in some ways in that the series reread that I did a lot of the sort of uh, there were these small story points that uh that were written that that feel very disconnected from the larger yes. story playing exactly. out yeah. and then they're sort of all brought in towards the end of the series <laughs> run uh you know in some ways they're all sort of brought together thread small threads from each of these kind of come together near the end mm-hmm. of the run but in the show in the show it does a brilliant job of weaving them all together in very good ways that will keep them on your mind. Because I found when reading the comic, I had to go back, like in the late issues and the late volumes of it, I had to go back and be like, where was that character from? I need to read that story again and reacquaint myself with that character. And I can't even imagine having read these as the comics came out because you're talking about, you know, a year or more separating when a character was introduced in their story and then coming back into a play in some small way a year and a half, yes. two years later in the in the comic. The show does a brilliant job of weaving all of these stories and all of these characters together in ways that keeps them at the the top of your mind and keeps them relevant throughout and I feel like it's going to benefit so much from that uh in in our sort of what we're used to how we're used to watching shows absolutely Definitely. yeah it was yeah. it was an interesting choice also to like deviate from what is essentially the main character right yeah. uh, and to go off in these side sort of side stories with like with the David Thewlis character and just um brilliant 
he's brilliant. Yeah, it's just and but but like you said, it all it all sort of threads back in and <clears throat> and brilliantly so. I, I would say that this is one of the best adaptations of comics I've seen. I mean, it's this is really and like you said, I think they really improve on it too in a lot of ways. But it's just really good storytelling with really compelling sort of characters. Um, and, and great. I mean, Tom, Tom Sturridge is 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 terrific. Um, Patton Oswalt, funny. You know, oh, he's a very yes. funny guy. But Thulis is 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 just like on another level. And of course, Jenna Coleman. I always love her. But uh, well, I I think Sandman is a, a prime example, along with the Expanse, of what can yeah. be achieved when you include the original creators as part yeah. of the uh, process. Uh, you yeah. know, they did the same thing with the Expanse. Uh, the two guys that wrote the novel series were. You know, wrote did some writing. They were overseers, and in this set, you know, same here, thing here. Neil Gaiman um, was showrunner and uh, oversaw a lot of it. And I, you know, being someone who I read the series when it first came out, month to month, uh, and I've reread it multiple times over the years. Um, I I hate the term. Oh well, this is uh, this is a comic or a book or something that's unfilmable. Nobody can film this, and I I did I have always disagreed with that. I, it always depends to me on who who's doing it, uh, what format they're trying to tell it in, and who uh, what they pay attention to as the key parts of the story. And I you know to that extent, I always thought well, Sandman needs to be a series. There's no way they could do you know they talk about it over the years. Oh, we're going to do a movie or we're going to do a trilogy, and I'm like that just takes the it takes away from the story it's a it's a fairy tale it needs to be uh have room to breathe and expand and i think they've hit it perfectly with uh with this series uh you know we even got a surprise uh bonus episode that nobody thought was going to happen yeah. um and great they, great episode yeah and they've hinted that um while it's been renewed, it's not necessarily, it may not be a second season in the conventional sense that everybody thinks they, they're talking right now. It's like, how do we want to tell this story? Because, you know, the next storyline is, is a bit different than the first one. It's like, do we want to tell it in the same format? How do we want to do it? So uh, I, I suspect that the second season will be as um, amazing as the first and may not be again what people expect, but I think it'll be great. I'm looking forward to it. And always remember that the cats don't like you. <laughs> yep, not they're really. just waiting to kill you. I've always said that. We're waiting just, to murder you, know, you in your sleep. Yeah, yep, pretty much. Exactly. Yeah, I was like, what is this bonus episode? Why do I care about cats? But man, that was a good. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> it was yes. so good. Yes. Anyway, it's just it's a terrific show. I was just. Uh, I kind of am glad I went in a little cold, like Game of Thrones too. I didn't know what to expect with that because I had never read this, the books. But this, I was like, I remember reading these comics a long time ago, maybe when they came out, because everybody was talking about them. And, you know, I, I've read other things by Neil Gaiman, obviously, but it's just, I was never, I was not like, oh my God, I got to see Sandman. Right. You know, and I, 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 it was good. And I just let it unfold and let the story envelop me and just got captivated by the whole thing. I would, I would watch 10 seasons of this. Hopefully they'll, they're going to do a lot more, but uh, yes, you know, as things go, it doesn't always work out, but Still also got my fingers crossed for the Joanna Constantine spinoff, which uh, which you never know. That Although maybe we'll, get Const- maybe we'll get Constantine 2 with Keanu Reeves. Maybe she could be in that. I would sure. love that. That is the crossover sure. I want to see. <clears throat> that is the crossover we need. Yes. 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 I would that totally would be fantastic. Uh, and what, else, what else is on your guys' list? Um, this well, year, one of the big ones that uh, uh, I absolutely loved and shocked me uh, in, the, in the best way, um, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Yes. I, oh, yes. come on. That's I great. I it was so good because I had gotten so used to what sort of the new Star Trek where it's all these season long arcs and very dramatic and there's very, yeah. you know, everything develops in a very slow pace. And I loved Strange New Worlds because of its its throwback to original episodic Trek. There's one, you know, this yep. thing that's happening over the course of the episode and they solve it or, you know, figure it out or do something about it. It's an adventure that is solved in one episode. Uh, I love that. Uh, Anson Mount as Christopher Pike is, he he might be <laughs> one of my favorite Star Trek captains of all time. Uh, after yes, just, he is just brilliant. I love how he differentiates himself from other captains. He, he listens to people while he has lots of charming charisma. I love that his superpower, I guess, as a captain is 
listening to everyone and choosing yeah. what he thinks is you know sort of the best option from what all of the experts that he has surrounded himself uh yeah. you know, think is yeah. best yeah his superpower is collaboration exactly right? yes, yes. i love Teamwork. all of that and i love that somehow they've been able to create a compelling show despite anyone familiar with star trek knowing where certain things end up with him and, yeah. and with other characters, and yet the right. show is ridiculously compelling. Every single episode is amazing. I found himself found myself cheering for him every time. You know, every time he is is just does what he does, and so I I love that show, and it has sort of renewed my interest in Star Trek after getting kind of beaten down by this the pace of some of the other Star Trek shows that are out there, which are great but just much different. Yeah. Yeah, I love no, all the Star yeah. Trek shows. I, we've talked about this on on here quite a bit, uh, and they all have different tones and different uh, things they're setting out to do. But yeah, Strange New Worlds was was just amazing. It's kind of like the you know the perfect uh, mix of uh, you know, like you said, episodic. The the whatever the main A story is is resolved at the end of the episode, but then you still have these character things. And other, you know, you know, B and C stories that kind of continue in the background as you go. And some of those get resolved as we go. But, um, yeah, and the actors on it are, are fantastic. So, yeah, no, good pick. I, I agree with you there. Yeah, it's a great pick. A great show. And I, I didn't necessarily renew my interest in Star Trek because I'll watch any Star Trek anytime uh, repeatedly. Yes. But it's just, I think you're right. I think it is the standalone episodic nature of it that I really kind of missed and I'm a fan of mythology episodes or mythology shows where you get like, you know, my, my classic example of that has always been X-Files yeah. mm-hmm. where, you know, you get the monster of the week or whatever, but you also get this overarching sort of what happened to Mulder's sister kind of thing. Who's the yes. cigarette smoking man, et cetera. It's like years and years and years this shit gets go, goes and finally gets resolved. Or you call you can't call him Cancer Man anymore because they were calling him that for a while. But, right, right. Um, <laughs> But for this, it's like they're still building to something. And Joe and I's theory is that, of course, they're building to reintroducing classic Trek again with Kirk and Scott and you know and everybody like going to the to the classic Enterprise and sort of rebooting that whole thing because they're gradually sprinkling in the characters. And I mean, obviously, we met Kirk in the last season in the first season. So, um, but yeah, I just it, it and you cannot say enough good things about Anson Mount and Anson Mount's hair because it's just yes, yes. amazing. So it's like a character of its own. Basically. His hair I has wish, its own agent. <laughs> I wish my hair looked like that. Oh, I, honestly. I, I wish that yeah, so much. He is, <clears throat> and you're right because you know what happens to Pike. You know what happens to that character. You know that Kirk ends up commanding the Enterprise at some point, and Pike, you know, is in a wheelchair and can only speak with a light or whatever. But that because that's what's happened in the show in the past. Right. But. As as people have said in the in the show, it's like that doesn't necessarily mean that's what's really going to happen. So whether it'll really happen or not, I don't know. But right now, it, it, I can't believe it's only been one season because I feel like I've been watching this show for years and been loving it for so long. It's, yeah. it's just it's yeah. just that it's already become a part of me. It's it's terrific. But uh, yeah, can't say enough good things about Strange New Worlds. It's it's really excellent. So good pick. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to a show uh, you were uh, Rick was speaking about Lost and 1899 earlier. Um, but a, another show that I greatly enjoyed this year, uh, that has a lot of, uh, threads and pedigree to lost. In fact, is a show called from, uh, Harold wow. Perrineau, uh, stars in it. He was in lost, yeah. uh, Jack Bender, uh, who was a producer on lost and a director, uh, has the same duties here on this show. Um, there, there's even, uh, a visual callback to Lost, which I'm kind of curious to see what they do with, and if it is. I, the more and more the show went on, I felt like we're 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 going to find out that whatever's behind this is the same thing that ultimately was behind Lost, aren't we? Because it's got mm. that same vibe. But what it's about is it's basically this town in Middle America. It's a small little town, and it the town basically traps anyone who enters. So if you end up uh, well, I, I wouldn't even say if you end up accidentally there. It, it, uh, the town basically leads people there, and once you've entered the town, you can't leave. Driving away, you end up in a loop right back to the town. Hmm. Uh, at the same time, at night, uh, these strange kind of nocturnal creatures come out that look like people, and sometimes people that uh, the inhabitants of the town know, except if you let them in, they kill you. <laughs> or if they lure you outside, they turn into these monsters and, and murder you. Um, wow. So there's like a curfew in the town. But uh, much like 
uh, it's interesting because they explain a lot of this and go through a lot of this to the new characters pretty quickly. It's not like one of those, like, you know, what's going on? Why are people acting strange? Nobody in the town acts strange because they're all pretty new as well and trying to figure out what's going on. So they're like, hey, here's what you need to know, basically, right away. So that, the, thankfully, the overarching mystery isn't like, What's going on here? Who can we trust and all that? It's like, no, here, things are screwed up. We need your help. We need to figure out how to get out of here. Um, wow, it, I had not seen, I'd heard the yeah. title in a like a one sentence synopsis, but no, hmm. I, I knew nothing about it other than what you had said. And now That's I'm kind of, uh, yeah. now I'm kind of really intrigued here by it. Is there a, is there a smoke monster though? Because there is not. Smoke. There is, they pretty upfront about the monsters are the creatures that come out at night that look like people. And they, they act like just normal people. It's like, hey, why don't you come outside? I, I need some help or let me in. I'm mm. cold. And once you do, then uh, you're dead. They eat you. Yes. Nice. <laughs> um, and it's on know. Epics, but it's a it's a great show, and I highly recommend it. It it did get renewed. It's coming back for a second season. Cool. Um, and it's well done. So awesome. Yeah. No one mentioned House of the Dragon. I'm surprised. Not a fan yeah. of that whole no. Game of Thrones no. universe and wow. and its spinoffs. What about Rings of Power? Did anybody like Rings of Power? I liked. Rings I of Power. loved it. Yes. yes. Okay. Good. So yes. that's on my list. Rings of Power. Yes. I was surprised at how much I liked. Because I was skeptical, like, oh, Lord of the Rings prequel show about the Silmarillion as the sort of the sort of the whatever you want to call it, inspiration for the show. I mean, I've read the Silmarillion, and there's not a lot there story wise. I mean, there's a lot of threads, but what are you going to do? Um, but they managed to pull off a really compelling show, and I, I really enjoyed it. And I think the the actors they have uh, playing these characters, and some of them we've seen before, like uh, Elrond and stuff. It's just it's very uh, it's very fun, and I enjoyed it a lot. And people are talking shit about it. Some people are, and I don't understand that, why they hate things. But, you know, that's the great thing about uh, this nerd culture is we can all like stuff, and we don't all have to like the same stuff, so that's good. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like it a lot, and I thought it was really well done. I look forward to the next season. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like was, a lot of the, the hate that comes to it is just because people want to compare it to, you know... Peter Jackson. You know, well, the Game of Thrones type th- story type tone and i feel like that's it's unfortunate that like fantasy is now that like that fantasy has, has been sort of attached to the game of thrones aesthetic and tone because mm-hmm. there was a time before that when it wasn't and i that was that's one of my sort of gripes about um uh game of thrones popularity sometimes is that it's got a lot of people into fantasy but into fantasy for the wrong not reasons and i'm not trying to be gatekeeping but it's you don't need the constant sex violence yes. horrible like yeah. things happening you can have escapist fantasy without it being shocking and sort of yeah. visceral horror and i uh, you know that's sort of like it doesn't need to be depressing it doesn't need to remind you reality is horrible so here's horrible fantasy too you know yeah. like that doesn't need yeah. i don't need yeah. that in my life i like escapist you- fantasy that that yeah. token sort of you know gave us and that peter jackson's uh you know films gave us where it can be hopeful fantasy and i feel like we've gotten away from that people want it to be dark dark fantasy and so you're saying the problem with uh, with rings of power is not enough rapes <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> it, like it's not like rapes and Understood. torture like there's the rapes more and incest yeah. more incest more rape more torture and yes. i feel like we've gotten so far away from that because of the popularity and the sort of you know again cultural zeitgeist that game of thrones became <clears throat> people yeah. have come to expect that from that genre and Lord of Ring, Lord of the Rings is a great reminder that it, it wasn't always that way. No, that's a that's a really brilliant uh, way to put it because you, you get that kind of thing now. Like I think of a show like The Witcher, which is also violent and also there's a lot of sexy stuff in it, and you know Henry Cavill without a shirt, which appeals to people, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean Game of Thrones became such a huge thing, a huge juggernaut, if you will, that it, it that it definitely infected things. And I think the people, I think you're right, the people who are looking for that kind of thing will not necessarily be as enthusiastic about Rings of Power, because I don't think there's one rape in the entire show. No. Um, and, <laughs> no. I mean, there's some there's some fights and stuff, but nobody, I don't remember any, like, eyeballs falling out or, like, you know, yeah. people getting stabbed and blood shooting out everywhere. And, right. People forget and, that a significant portion of those amazing Lord of the Rings films, Jackson's Lord of the Rings films, was just these hobbits walking, like, you know, a bunch, yeah. bunch yeah. of guys. Yeah, people talking. People just walking people, and yeah. talking and being, you know. And a lot of and weed. And being hopeful. Yes. <laughs> a lot of pipe yes. weed, but also people just being yes. hopeful. And, yeah. and 
good winning out, even when, you know, at the worst times, maybe it can even be criticized for that, the storytelling, but, you know, at the worst of times when everything was down, you know, hope remains and there will be, you know, victory, there'll be victory for the, the light and the good and, you know, just have faith in that, yep. where Game of Thrones essential message over and over again was don't have faith that anything good will happen and that's yes. probably your best bet is like Never, just yeah. don't hope for anything good to happen just try to hide and not make any waves otherwise horrible things will happen to you yes <laughs> well yeah, that never better illustrated by the fact that a, a prominent lord of the rings character gets beheaded in the first season of lord of uh, game of thrones so it's like yeah yes. oh Sean Bean's in this show. I'm going to watch that. Oh, now he's dead. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. And he he tried to get out. You're right. He tried to like book the system. He's like, this isn't the real heir. What the fuck is going on here? And they're like, oh, we can't have that. You must die. And so that's the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's not a hopeful show. It doesn't end hopeful. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. And that's why Rings of the Power Game of Thrones, like, just really <laughs> won me over. Was then like, oh, that's right. We can have hopeful fantasy again. We yeah. can have bright, hopeful, optimistic escapist yeah. fantasy again and that's what this can be you know you, there's a feeling that the 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 forces of good will triumph in the end and you're watching to see that happen and they're not going to you're not going to get punched in the face with some gritty realism or horrific thing like you can watch this and yeah escape <laughs> well the, the other discussions i've had with friends over uh, rings of power is they're like oh i don't like it because uh, if you remember in the 23rd appendix of this other book, <laughs> yeah. Galadriel ne was never there or this never happened. I'm like, you know, none of this like ever happened, right? This is like, what are you talking about? This right? is all yeah. made up. Yeah, <laughs> and right. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm not like, uh, you know what? Even if they like contradicted something that happened in, in the Peter Jackson movies, I'm like, this is, they're telling their own story and right. they're pulling elements from, from the source material and the appendixes and Silmarillion and all that, sure. But at, at the end, they're going to tell their own story. And that's why you have characters that don't appear anywhere in any of the books or, you know, uh, supplementary material. And I think that's okay. It's like they're they're telling their own thing. And if you don't like it, don't watch it. I mean, it's, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I, I think it's there's brilliant, no, though. I love it. Yeah. And, you know. People are bummed out. There's no hot uh, elf on elf action. Yeah. <laughs> or elf on hobbit action. Or elf on hobbit action, yeah. They're not hobbits, mind you. They don't say the word hobbit yet. Oh, that's right. Harfoots. Harfoots. Come on. Harfoots. Harfoots, yeah. No, it's just, uh, yeah, I, I, I would agree with you guys 100%. It, there, there is some, obviously, elements of danger, and there is some, yes. yeah. some sad stuff. But, you know, in, in, in the first season doesn't end super hopeful. It's like you guys are living in, you know, you should move. You're, you're, you're yeah, living, you might want to, you yeah. might want to rethink your accommodations. Yes. Um, you're living in Mordor, just saying. Mordor, um, yes. Mordor. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally on the, on the journey. And we know how the story ends eventually, right? But sure. It's okay. Sure. It's like the same way I feel about Andor. It's like, I know what happens with Andor. I know, uh, you know, how, what happens to Andor later, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about uh, what does, what's going to happen because they are t like you said they're telling their own story which I which I appreciate so yes <clears throat> it's cool well another uh, recent one that I, I love to uh, uh, love to want to call out here uh, Wednesday on Netflix I yes. absolutely loved because I, uh, I, yes. I I didn't realize how much I missed that era of Tim Burton not more recent Tim Burton but like it felt like Beetlejuice era Tim Burton which yeah. I loved yeah. and I forgot how much I missed that until I was watching it and Jenna Ortega is absolutely phenomenal in it and it just <laughs> it it she carries that show it is I'm watching through it a second time right now with my wife and uh just realizing all over again how much I love this show and all the performances in it and the vibe and the Tim Burton style that's in it and how well that comes across and and again how much I missed it yeah is everyone in the show incredibly pale <laughs> <laughs> those who need to be are <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I've heard oh, I've heard good things. It's lovely, yes. And I do uh, I do think uh, it's great that uh, Luis Guzman keeps getting work, so that's good. But, yeah. And Jenna Ortega is, is is terrific, so I'm I'm happy about that. But yeah, I want to watch it. Uh, and again, I'm based on your recommendations, both of you, and the recommendations of others, I will I will definitely get to it. It's just there's only so many hours in the day. Exactly. I'm busy watching RRR again. <laughs> so I don't have time for uh, I'll probably kill the entire season of uh, of. Uh, of Wednesday, if I watched, uh, like probably, Star, yeah, that's uh, the also only Christi, Christina Ricci comes back too, right? Yes, so she is in it and and is marvelous in it. It's awesome, um, absolutely, yeah. Did the other, uh, either uh, of you guys see? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Joe. 
Well, Come I was on. just going to say the other show I wanted to give a shout out before we uh, we got Go to on. the end is uh, the old man. Oh, uh, sure. That was uh, Jeff Bridges' show, and it's also kind of remarkable understanding he went through uh, cancer and uh, COVID and lockdown and everything making the show, and it's it's an amazing show, and it's kind of like think of think of the uh, spy uh, thriller genre done with old men, <laughs> and yeah, um, uh, yeah Lithgow is terrific too. Yeah, Lithgow's in it. Uh, it's just <clears throat> it's well, it's another show that's well acted. Uh, even the quiet moments uh, in between the action are just riveting to watch. Um, exceptional character development. Uh, again, it was another one where I'm like, I'm not, I think I know where this is going. And even, even when it did go the direction I thought it, it was in such a different way, I guess that it made it even better. Uh, you know, Amy Brennerman is in it mm -hmm, she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it too got renewed and we'll come back nice. for another season. Uh, so it's definitely, uh, worth watching if you like well-constructed, well-told stories uh, is worth watching. No lightsabers or anything in it. No sci-fi, no. but it's, uh, it's a good uh, thriller spy story uh, that deals with yeah. old age in interesting ways. And cool dogs. Yes, cool and cool dogs. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, it, it's interesting to see a show like that where it is, <clears throat> you know, obviously Jeff Bridges is, is an older guy, but the whole sequence where he's having that fight Yes. With the much younger man, obviously, I, I bought it. You know, I thought that he did a great job. I mean, I love Jeff Bridges, so I, I would watch pretty much anything he's in, but he's just, uh, he, he totally sells it. And the show is it's quite good. You're absolutely right. Alia Shawcott is also in the yeah, show, and yep. she's terrific. Yep. Um, playing a mystery character, which I yes. love. Yes. Yes, please don't, because I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, oh, despite yeah. hearing great things. <clears throat> yeah, it's worth watching for sure. It's, it's excellent. Absolutely. Um, yep. Any other TV streaming stuff, or should we just, do you have any books or comics? That we want to throw out for people. I have a couple, but I mean, anything like that. Oh, I'll, I'll just throw mine out then. I, the, the couple of books that I really enjoyed this year. Um, obviously, I've been talking about the Chuck Wendig book, uh, Wayward, which is a, a sequel to Wanderers. Which, if you've never read Wanderers, is, is an excellent post-apocalyptic uh, story. If you know, you know, you loved Wanderers. Not, Absolutely, yeah. Yes. So Wayward, Wayward is excellent. Wayward is terrific. Um, I really enjoyed that, and then. Um, a couple of the comics that I read this year, uh, I read a graphic novel called The Good Asian. It's like a f noir kind of detective story, which is which is excellent. Um, and then I also wanted to shout out to, to Alex Ross's uh, Full Circle a Fantastic Four uh, show, uh, graphic novel, which I really enjoyed yes. too. Uh, and also good. Devil's Reign, uh, which is also a great thing about uh, Wilson Fisk and his rise to power in New York City uh, by Chip Zdarsky and Marco Cicchetto, yes. which is also a terrific uh, graphic novel, a comic, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I can't remember what those other things are called. The book, when they put all the issues together, what is that called? <laughs> Collected edition? Trade. Trade. Thank trade you. paperbacks. Trade, yeah. Save um, it for the, wait for the trade. No. Wait for the trade. I'm yeah, just kidding. Buy the floppies. <clears throat> Buy the floppies, baby. But yeah, those are a couple of things that I want to throw out there. And then uh, I'm also really a big fan of uh, COVID boosters. That's a great thing that came out in 2022. Yes. So, <laughs> anyway. Well, I'm definitely, uh, definitely wayward because um, as you said, I was uh, loved Wanderers. That was yeah. such a compelling book. And um, he does not disappoint with the sequel. Um, definitely Jason Aaron's Avengers run is continuing and wrapping up. And we talked about that before. Yes. Um, I've enjoyed, um, I, I'm always a sucker for DC Comics uh, universe uh, changing uh, crossovers. And they're doing a sequel to the original one, Crisis on Infinite Earths. This time it is Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, and they're, you know, equally shaking up their universe. Uh, I know people are like, oh my God, I can't believe they're, they're not doing like a, a full reboot or anything, but this time they're, it, it's funny because they're actually undoing the original crisis and everything's back. So the whole multiverse is back. Every story has happened, you know, each era, the silver age, bronze age and all that has its own earth and all this kind of stuff. So they're really kind of opening up to, you can tell, They'll be able to tell any story they want to with their characters going forward. I mean, they yes, their main titles have their continuing continuity um, and everything, but it's you know, instead of uh, you know tightening things down, it's like we're just going to open it up and we can do anything we want to going forward. Um, uh, also, a shout out to the Kaiju Preservation Society by John oh, Scalzi. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. book. I love Scalzi, man. Anything that guy writes is. <coughs> 
uh, something my wife and I immediately like, yeah, we're going to get that book because uh, he's just such a terrific writer. Um, if you've ever read his uh, book, Red Shirts, you would know uh, that's, that's a, a loving, book, yeah. loving tribute to the Red Shirts on Star Trek without being set in the Star Trek universe. That's all mm-hmm. I'll say about that. I loved uh, uh, Kai- Kaiju Preservation Society. Yeah, it, the title is what got me. Uh, the title yeah, of being exactly. a Kaiju fan and the story is what kept me. Yeah, yeah so I highly recommend that. Um, you know, I was going to pick an Andy Weir book, but I realized it came out in 21. I didn't read it to this year, uh, Project Hail Mary. So I'll uh, uh, okay. retroactively pick that one for my best of uh, 2021. So. There you go. <laughs> also, yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention is Saga returned. Uh, Brian came on. Saga yes. Came yes. Back in so that was pretty exciting. But uh, if you've ever read Saga, people, you got to gotta jump on that one. So. I'll read anything Brian K. Vaughn writes. He's an exceptional yeah, writer. Yeah, I, I can't wait for the Saga show, which I'm sure they're going to do. Yeah. Saga. Although it's probably unfilmable. Wait. <laughs> it's unfilmable. Or they'll cancel yeah. it after one season like they after did Paper Girls. Season. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So, any books or anything else for you, Rick? No, no. You know, I, I've been sort of been doing so much TV and uh, film yeah. watching that it hasn't left a whole lot of time. <laughs> and most of the stuff that I've been reading has been stuff that came out, you know, two, three, four years ago. Um, I do sure. want to pick up uh, Wayward because I loved uh, Wanderers, but I need to get yeah. myself prepped emotionally uh, to read Wayward yeah. because yeah. Wanderers, I read during, you know, right when it came out during pandemic times and it would just hit so close to home that I... I had to take a break for a while. <laughs> yeah, I will say yeah. that Wayward definitely has that kind of that kind of feeling to it. In fact, more so after we've gone through all the things that we went through with the pandemic and and, and other things in politics and whatever. Yeah, it really, 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 almost to the point of being too much Oof. in some cases, but not not too much. Like he he he's like Wendy Chuck finds the the sort of threshold of where it could be too much, but then he like holds back just enough where you're like, fuck, this is so real. Yeah. <laughs> yes. did some, you know. yep. So it's just, it's a trip. I call him Chuck, you know, cause we're friends, of course. but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but it's just, yeah, it's, it's a great book. And that's one of the, one of the books I was looking forward to reading this year because I enjoyed Wanderer so much, but, uh, but yeah, Kaiju Preservation Society is also a terrific book too. So I love Scalzi too, or you call him Scalzi or Scalzi? Scalzi. I just call him John. For, again, yeah. Johnny. We're, we're pals. You know. Johnny baby. Um, yeah, reading is harder. I've been doing a lot of audiobooks and also, you know, going back to stuff that I that I've been reading back in the day. Uh, the the other book I just finished, which is not a book from from this year, which is from years ago, was Anthony Bourdain's book, which uh, uh, yes. which I still which I still uh, listen uh, to. Tony, every, yeah. in his own words, yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't want the show to end on a downer. So uh, somebody <laughs> way to else, go. Yeah. Somebody pick something else quick. No, what else, Joe? Anything else? Um. I'm sure there's a lot I'm overlooking. It was, uh, yeah. you know, it's. I, I mentioned Project Hail Mary because it still. I still feel like the last, you know, since things went on lockdown, even though we're for better or for worse, kind of out of that. It still mm-hmm. feels like the last three years have kind of all bled <clears throat> together. Yeah. Um, so I really had to make a point this this for this episode, making sure I was remembering and picking things from this year because uh, I was actually going to pick no you know no time to die as one of my favorite movies like that ah, was last year I'm like yeah. was it though yeah it was so what is time right I mean, it, exactly what is time anymore what is day what is yeah. I don't know yeah so yeah that's that's something I, I definitely uh, I don't want to say enjoyed because uh, that's not <laughs> the word but that's definitely something that happened during during lockdown and during the pandemic it's like Time is really not that important now, as it turns out. Yes. And also that you can get anything delivered to your house. That's just another thing. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe we're at the end of this year already. It's like, Yeah, I can't believe it's already 20, 2023 yeah. next yeah. year, if you can believe that. Yeah. So what about you, Rick? Any other things that you want to throw out before we go? You know, it's funny. It did occur to me uh, uh, before when you mentioned uh, Sandman as being one of the best uh, comic book adaptations. I did want to throw out, too, if you haven't seen it uh, on Netflix, one of the best video game um, adaptations uh uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, well, Arcane is probably the best one, the show that's on mm-hmm. Netflix, but uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners was actually an amazing anime oh, wow. uh, series that yeah. came out based on the Cyberpunk uh, video game franchise that I, I I absolutely loved, and it got me to play the game afterwards, but also it was a great throwback to old school anime that got me first interested in anime, like the Ghost in the Shell era, like, you know, things yeah, like nice. that. Um, it is wonderfully done cyberpunk anime that is bright and colorful and crazy and just over the top like you know over the top battles and action and and just (laughs) everything going on that i kind of love about the cyberpunk 
genre in anime, um, you know, as opposed to sort of the more dark Blade Runnery type, you know, yeah. noirish yeah, sort of yeah. vibe. The crazy cyberpunk stuff going on I, in Edge Runners is really great. It's a great. I think I don't think it's you know something that's going to go on for multiple seasons. If it does, it'd like to be you know an anthology type show, but. Uh, that one season of Cyberpunk Edge Runners, if the idea of crazy over the top bubble gum and machine gun cyberpunk, uh, you know, is something that sounds appealing to you, check out Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm awesome. in. Yeah, I yeah, need to check great. that out. Yeah. So you had me at Ghost in the Shell or you yes. know, Akira or yes. stuff like that. So yeah, really that like yeah. era of like Akira yeah. and and uh, Ghost in the Shell is one of the things that you know got me into sort of that cyberpunk vibe in Definitely. anime yeah, yeah, and. Yeah. Edge Runners really brought up a lot of those feelings, uh, those similar feelings. Nice, cool, great. Um, that's a lot of stuff for people to to, yeah. to check out. I'm sure that they've already checked out some of these things because you know it, some of them were popular in, in the mainstream. But we have, I think, uh, also throw out throw out a few things that uh, maybe people aren't aware of. So that's good. We've yeah. done our jobs. We <laughs> have. Yes. Which is, I guess, to be interesting. So I don't know, or you know, give people <laughs> some things to think. Yeah, I wish I could have read more books. I mean, that's a thing that I, I always think. And I really want to try to remedy that uh, <clears throat> going forward. But uh, yeah, it, time's just, you know, it gets sucked away. Everybody's got things yes, going on. And I got to watch all the things. And again, I got to watch RRR, you know, as many times as possible. So. Exactly. Did, I, did I mention that's an, ex- an amazing movie? Okay. I don't, I don't think you did. What's it called again? No. RRR. It's really easy to remember. It's three letters and they're all the same. Oh, okay. Good. It's like, R, you know. Arr. It's not a pirate film, though. Uh, oh, I did. Oh, I forgot to make, mention our flag's death. Oh, well. Shoot, that's a good show, too. If you our flag that. means death, yes. Our flag means death, not yes. his death. Yes, yes, check that one out. It's great. Check that out. So, all right. So cool. Uh, for uh, let's see, we got uh, the flick cast. You got to find it at uh, at Spotify and at uh, Apple and all the other places you find podcasts. Joe and I are on the socials. Where can we find you, Rick? Uh, well, you know, usually I say Twitter, but who knows anymore? <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel yeah. like that's not as reliable of a place to send people anymore. But I am on Twitter at, at Rick Marshall. I am also, you know, on Mastodon. Um, I am also yeah. on Instagram as that underscore Rick Marshall. Um, okay. You know that underscore Rick Marshall and uh, yeah, I'm on the social medias, but also you can find uh, links to everything at rickmarshall.com. I have a website uh, where everything uh, is even easier. Yes, rickmarshall.com is probably the place to find reviews, interviews, all that sort of stuff that I've been doing. Cool, perfect, excellent. All right, well, that's a really big show, so I guess we'll be done now. Yes, uh, I'm always bad at ending things, so I'm just going to say for Joe Dilworth and Rick Marshall, I'm Chris Ulrich. That was the Footcast. Thanks so much for listening.